Hi, my name is Laura Marbacher and I will talk about how goals erase framing effects in risky decision making. It's joint work with Jana Jarecki and Jörg Riskamp. This project investigates framing effects in risky choices with goals. Framing effects have been widely investigated in decision science. Much research has shown more risk taking when risky choices are presented as losses than as gains. The standard model for this is cumulative prospect theory. Research also showed that goals influence risk taking. By goals, I mean resources that people have to earn in a limited time. People repeatedly choose between a safe, low variance option and a risky, high variance option in order to reach a goal in a limited time. Research found more risk taking for higher goals, which are harder to reach and for shorter time. The standard model for this is risk sensitive forging theory. Further, there is a third theory, which is called dynamic prospect theory. Dynamic prospect theory is an extension of cumulative prospect theory, and it can also describe goal based risk taking. The goal of this project is to investigate how risky choices are influenced by both framing effects and goals. Previous studies on framing effects in risky choices with goals found mixed results and therefore we study framing effects and goals in a choice experiment containing multiple choice tasks. To examine framing effects, we modified the standard risky choice with goal task. In the standard task, people start with zero resources, hit points, and they have to reach a positive goal in five trials. In each trial, people choose between two options in order to gain points. Here, in this example choice, in the second trial, the current point state is 8 and the goal is 22. Here, for example, the decision maker chooses the right option, then an outcome is drawn, here the decision maker gets 5 points and this increases the point state from 8 to 13. To examine framing effects, we modified this standard task and we employed two frames. First, the outcome framing. Here we change the outcome of the options from gains into losses. And when the outcomes are losses, the goal is not to fall below a certain amount of points. Here in this loss task, for example, the goal is not to fall below zero points. And the second frame is the state framing. Here we change the resource state at the beginning of the task and the goal. We shifted the starting point to the negative and the goal to zero. Importantly, the distance between the starting point and the goal does not change between positive state domains and negative state domains. Here, for example, the distance is 22 in both tasks. And when we combine the outcome framing and the state framing, we get four differently framed choice problems. First, gain problems with positive states. Here, the outcomes are gains and people start with zero points and they have to reach a positive goal. And second, gain problems with negative states. Here the outcomes are also gained just as before, but people start with negative points and they have to reach a goal of zero points. And then loss problems with positive states. Here the outcomes are losses and people start with positive points and they have to avoid falling below zero points. And loss problems with negative states. Here the outcomes are also losses and people start with zero points and they have to avoid falling below a negative goal. Briefly repeated, we are interested in the effect of outcome framing and state framing. And when we combine these frames, we get four differently framed choice problems. We also test three cognitive models. First, risk sensitive fortune theory. Risk sensitive fortune theory is an optimal model for risky choices with goals. This optimal model calculates for each state in each trial whether the risky option or the safe option has a higher chance to reach the goal. The optimal model finds the optimal choice in each state. 
To find the optimal choice, the optimal model uses dynamic programming. More specifically, it uses backward induction. This means the optimal model first calculates the optimal choice in the last trial, and then it goes backward until the first trial is reached. Importantly, the optimal model only cares about the chance to reach the goal. The optimal model assumes that higher goals which are harder to reach lead to more risk taking. This is because for higher goals, the risky options chance to reach the goal tends to be higher than the safe options chance. The second model is cumulative prospect theory. Cumulative prospect theory assumes that people always choose the option with the highest subjective utility. Here on the left, you see the equations for, pro, uh, for prospect theory and in green, you see the model parameters. I will not explain these equations in detail, but important is that cumulative prospect theory with certain parameter values can describe outcome framing effects. This is because prospect theory assumes a different value function for outcomes above the reference point and outcomes below the reference point. Outcomes above the reference point are gains and outcomes below the reference point are losses. Based on this different value function for gains and losses, cumulative prospect theory can describe more risk taking for losses than for gains. Importantly, cumulative prospect theory does not consider goals or states. And the third model is dynamic prospect theory. Dynamic prospect theory is an extension of cumulative prospect theory and dynamic prospect theory can describe how goals change risk taking. Dynamic prospect theory assumes a dynamic reference point and this dynamic reference point corresponds to the average outcome necessary to obtain for reaching the goal. The dynamic reference point here RT is defined by the distance between the goal and the current state divided by the number of trials left. The dynamic reference point works as follows. For a high goal, the distance between the current state and the goal is high and then the reference point is also high. And for a high reference point, the outcomes are more likely to lie below the reference point, then the outcomes are perceived as losses, and this leads to more risk taking. For a small goal, the distance between the current state and the goal is small. This leads to a small reference point. And for a small reference point, the outcomes are more likely to lie above the reference point. Then the outcomes are perceived as gains and this leads to risk avoidance. And in this way, dynamic prospect theory can describe how goals change risk taking. Here, I will illustrate the qualitative model predictions briefly. First, the predictions of the optimal model, which only cares about the chance to reach the goal. The optimal model predicts more risk taking for harder goals. It predicts no effect of the outcome framing on risk taking, and it predicts no effect of the state framing on risk taking. And then the predictions of cumulative prospect theory with certain parameter values. Cumulative prospect theory predicts no effect of the goal on risk taking. It predicts more risk taking for losses than for gains. And it predicts no effect of the state framing on risk taking. And the predictions of dynamic prospect theory. Dynamic prospect theory predicts more risk taking for harder goals. It predicts no effect of the outcome framing on risk taking and it predicts no effect of the state framing on risk taking. To examine framing effects in risky choices with goals, we conducted an experiment. 100 participants solved six tasks in the positive gain domain, six tasks in the negative gain domain, six tasks in the positive loss domain and six tasks in the negative loss domain. Each choice problem was repeated three times and the order was randomized. We had a two times two within subject design consisting of outcome framing and state framing and we had two levels of goal difficulty. 
To test the effect of the goal, the outcome framing and the state framing, we conducted a Bayesian mixed effect regression with bi-participant random intercept. And for the goal, we found more risk taking with harder goals. For the outcome framing, we found no effect of the outcome domain on risk taking. And for the state framing, we found no effect of the state domain on risk taking. In sum, we found no framing effects in risky choices with goals. Importantly, these are aggregated results and these results do not discriminate between the optimal model and the dynamic prospect theory. And therefore, we also conducted cognitive modeling. We compared the performance of the three cognitive models and a baseline model which predicts random choices. We estimated the model parameters on an individual level and we calculated the evidence strength for the models based on archaica weights. In this plot, you see the evidence strength for the models separated by participants. Each bar represents a participant and the colors are the evidence strength for the models. In this plot, you can see that 78% of participants were best described by dynamic prospect theory, 7% were best described by cumulative prospect theory, and the optimal model described 2%. We see that dynamic prospect theory does much better describe choice behavior in risky choices than the other models. Let me sum up. We have investigated framing effects in risky choices with goals. We found that neither the outcome framing nor the state framing affected risk taking. Risk taking were sensitive to the goal. And a dynamic version of cumulative prospect theory could describe the majority of participants best. Taken together, our results show how goals can erase framing effects observed in risky choices without goals. If you would like to know more, feel free to contact me and thanks a lot for your attention.